Shot out is on by Bye. 15 seconds left in regulation time of the gold medal game. A steal by Sandra White. White for the empty net. Goal! And the first gold medals in the history of Olympic women's hockey go to the women of Team USA. For us, when, when we were playing the World Championships, they were actually every two years, and then kind of mid-career for me, they were every, every year. It was what we trained for, because the Olympics are only every four years. So in between that, we played one tournament. It was hard, because if we weren't playing for our college team and you had graduated, you didn't really get games. So you had to be like on your own working out, or maybe we would meet for a, a camp. Uh, and play a few practice games or a few exhibition games. But for the most part, that was like, that was the pinnacle. Like that year, if it was a world championship, that's, that's what you're shooting for. It meant everything to us. It is hard to break into the women's national team. You were seeing the best players in the world play against the best players in the world. And that's very special. Here comes Alex Carpenter. Carpenter backhand drive, she scores! Alex Carpenter with the insurance goal. Here comes Abby Murphy the other way. The United it's on the attack, Murphy, she scores! Abby Murphy ties it up! Kessel and Hillary Knight, Kessel waits, and for Knight, she scores! I was captain of my Bantam team with boys. I didn't realize at the time, but now I look back and I'm like, well, they treated me like, like one of them. It was, they made no difference what gender I was, and I think that was really critical for me as an athlete, and I, and I, I one of my favorite coaches, Greg Lepaka, he deflected all kinds of uh, negativity from me. Again, insulated me, protected. When, when coaches said, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna injure her, he'd sit down with us, make sure we were comfortable. When teams said they wouldn't want to play me because there's a girl on the team, he's like, well, then you're gonna have to forfeit. Like, it, he, he was just a, a part of my journey that, you know, could have gone a different way, but I just, I felt like I had support all the way through, and, Nothing was really gonna stop me because I, I loved it so much. Like for me, we had wooden sticks. At the national team level and at the collegiate level, we had boys sticks cut down. Can you imagine how stiff they were? So no wonder I couldn't shoot the puck. I'd love to try to shoot the puck today with one of these whippy sticks. And I remember they got us gear, but, it, but they didn't have any women before, like in, in, in USA Hockey. So we had um, the men's sweatsuits and we, 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 we looked, everything was so baggy and so big. And I, we were just, I remember just, we didn't care. We were just so excited to have something that had the USA logo on it. Um, you know, so it was, it was a lot different then. The 98 Olympics put women's hockey on the map. And from there, it just took off. Women's hockey was making its debut here, and though Team USA was a medal contender, it had never beaten Canada in a major competition. But then came a stunning comeback over Canada in the round-robin phase of the Olympic tournament. Team USA down 4-1 in the third period, coming back with six goals, ultimately winning 7-4. The two met again for the gold medal. The American team newly confident, the Canadians with redoubled resolve. When I pictured winning a gold medal, I always pictured the celebration, because that's what I always envied when I'd watch, like, Stanley Cups or I'd watch a World Series win or any sport that was winning a championship. I always wanted to know what it felt like. When the medals came, I was like, oh, yeah, we, we, like, we get to keep these. Like, these are ours. Like, I never thought about the medal itself. And so when the medals were coming at us, there was this beautiful tray of medals shining, like, coming our way, and it's just like, you can't, you can't even believe it. It's just very surreal. Now the ceremony. 
first medal goes over the head of the captain, Cammy Granato. And then for me, when I when I got the medal, I did want to just like curl up and cry. It's like the most amazing experience. And you just you just want more of it. After you get that, you want more. And Lisa Brown Miller, overcome with emotion, she can finally have that honeymoon. One day after getting married, she went to training camp. And the fruition is gold. We didn't have a pro league until this year. So there was no Stanley Cup, right? So you have the Olympics every four years and you have the world championships on the years that you don't have Olympic years. So that's the pinnacle of the pinnacle. The world championships is where you, you judge yourself to be the best team in the world. So it doesn't get bigger. The stage doesn't get bigger. That's the game that everybody plays for. I couldn't play today on the national team the way I played back then. They are bigger, they are stronger, they are faster, they are more skilled. They shoot the puck harder. When you think of women's hockey, you're gonna think of Hillary Knight. She's gonna be the you know, first person in the US that's gonna to come to mind. The best players in the world want to keep getting better, and that's Hillary. She's not done giving back to the game either. Taylor Heisey holds on Knight one time. When I first started, I didn't know women played hockey, but then 1998 was the birth of women's hockey in the Olympics, and at that level, and I was able to watch that on TV. Welcome everyone inside Big Hat for the first ever gold medal game for women's Olympic ice hockey. I was actually at a sleepover, and I won't forget this, my mom actually called my friend's mom to make sure that we were up and ready and watching. When we won, I was jumping up and down on my friend's couch, and it's just like this fond memory of just like pure elation, be like, oh my gosh, like we won, and not really understanding like the magnitude of the win, but just like so happy for our team and for our country and feeling that joy and understanding like if you could bottle that up that's what you want to give everyone uh, who's getting introduced to the game or who's tuning into the game or who's on the ice. My mom was trying to figure out what to do with us kids and someone had said get them on ice so they can learn how to skate and then eventually the next step is hockey. I saw the older kids with the bags and the heavier equipment and I was like oh my gosh what's that and all of a sudden you're hanging around the rink a little bit longer and you see hockey and you see the puck and all the things that go into it and that's what I was like oh like, I want to do that and sure enough I haven't looked back since. Look what we got in studio, Look Hillary and I, let's go. Wow. Gold medals, world championships, you name it. One of the pillars of Team USA, women's hockey, hockey in general. and the captain here in Brampton. She's kind of just a child at heart. Um, she's very much go with the flow, just has fun with a lot of things, doesn't take things too seriously. <laughs> On the ice, everyone knows what she does and her amazing talents, but off the ice too, she's an incredible human being. She's funny, she's warm, she's welcoming, she's sweet. She's an amazing player, but even better person. Well, a true leader. You know, and uh, she doesn't waver from her, her personality. Very serious, yet doesn't take herself too seriously. Pizza party? Yeah. Are you serious? I'm nervous. Oh my gosh, no one told me about this. I'm only coming if there's pepperoni pizza. It's just a really unique combination and one that I feel very fortunate to be around. I feel like I'm like a different person on the ice than I am off ice. I'll be like in your face, sometimes swearing at people. Just a, just a crazy competitor. How many times have we seen that before? And then off the ice, I'm like, meh, you know, that's cool. But then, like, I'll have, like, little bursts where it's like, you know, I could be in the grocery store and I'm gonna, like, outwalk somebody. And they have no idea we're competing. So I guess maybe I'm a competitor everywhere. She's not only smart, but she works hard and she does the right things. And I would say after watching her and then going to my first Senior Women's Worlds where, you know, she always made me feel like I was wanted and that I was there. and. When you're young and you're playing with, you know, studs and people who have won Olympic gold medals and done what you've been dreaming of, it's pretty special to have them, you know, care about you. It's your idol growing up and kind of why you get into hockey and 
why you make your goals is because you want to be like her. You know, I was a little starstruck. I was 14 years old, um, got her autograph, got a picture, got to talk to her, which was really cool. She posted a, a selfie on Instagram, and then a couple years later, you're playing on a line with her, and it's a, it's a full circle moment. I remember I was sitting next to her in the locker room, and our first worlds, and I was like, holy cow. Sent my mom a photo of her locker, and I was like, I'm literally next to Hillary right now. And my mom was like, well, don't, like, did she see you take the picture? Like, stop being creepy. You know, she pat me on the leg, and you don't even have to say anything. She was just like, You're, you got it. And that was, like, obviously one of the best performances I've ever had. And, you know, she's definitely someone that was there for me the whole time and, and loved on me even when, you know, games didn't go great, but she was still right there, right there to, you know, support me throughout all of it. It's funny when people come in, they, like, it, it takes them a while, and then all of a sudden, you know, a couple days in, they're showing me the picture that we took together when they're, you know, they, I don't know, they still have like braces and like years ago. And it's just really cute to, to see the same thing that um, sparked their, their dream. Like we share that together. What's funny, cause Hill was at my, my camp that I had in the summer after we won the Olympics. She needed um, a stick and then I, so I gave her my stick and then I gave her my gloves to wear. She said it was like, for her, it was like a really big deal, right? Getting it from an Olympian. And looking back, it was like, it was so neat to know that she was at that camp. She wore my number. You know, it was like a passing of the torch in a way. And then she becomes like the new number 21 and just this, you know, goal scorer and powerhouse. For one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. No one tells you how to, to carry on a legacy, right? You just do the best you can. We are taking on the world stage together. I was really lucky that my first world championship was in Plymouth, Michigan. I will never forget the moment where Hillary scored the game winner. It's just every single person cheering for you. I've been a part of arenas that it's not that way um, recently, and it's really fun to quiet them, but it's even more fun to make the arena up for you. That's just one of the best feelings. To be able to host the world and have them come to us and have our fans in the stands, I mean, that's a, that's a huge advantage to us. and a responsibility and also an honor that we don't take lightly. It's uh, awesome, I've never had that experience, having Worlds on home soil this year. I think it'll be a very cool experience. Playing on home soil is one thing, uh, you know, we've done it before and it's, it's really exciting just to have that pack building and have that support, but I think uh, mentally, it's just staying in that moment and, and not letting any outside noise get to you. I remember being younger and, you know, just being so, so mesmerized by the crowd and, and hearing everything, but I think just kind of focusing on what's inside the room. I have never played on home soil for a world championships yet. We're gonna be able to play fast and free and just play in front of, you know, our own fans who not only love, love us, but also can understand the way we play. Home soil is always amazing to play on. I've been lucky enough to play on home soil one or two times um, in world championships and for rivalry. My family has been able to come to, uh, I think all of the world championships wherever they've been for me, but um, some people haven't. And I think to not only have your family and your friends and your loved ones there to, to, have, to watch you, you know, in, in New York, well, it's gonna be really, really fun. It's always fun to be able to engage with, you know, the US fans here and like the little girls that come and get to see us play. The opportunity for them to see women's hockey hasn't been as big in the United States. So for them to be able to come and see one of the best teams in the world for women's hockey and see what they can achieve is super important. And hopefully we get you know a lot of little girls out there, a lot of people that see that they can be that too one day. Motivation, no one needs help with that. These elite women are intrinsically motivated you know, and they want to win on their home soil. They want to win anywhere. That's the competitive edge that comes out in you. And the home ice advantage sometimes does lift you a little bit more. I remember when they played the World Championships here in Plymouth, and it was incredible. It was a sold out crowd. And I remember watching as a fan back then. You know, I literally drove down from Toronto just to watch. And to think that this was happening in our country was just amazing. And I think we're gonna see the same thing. Anytime you can play on home soil, it grows the sport. Just the viewership and little girls being able to watch what these grown women are doing and saying, I can do that. And watching these women have a USA jersey on and saying, I want to be that. The impact that playing the world championship on home soil has for the bigger 
growth of the game is almost unmeasurable. This comes down to this. These women have worked so hard for their one game. Left jobs, they've left their studies. Gretchen Ullian, a teacher at Pingree School in Massachusetts, she gave that up. Now, there's, all of these have lives outside of hockey, and they gave, gave that up. There's no NHL to go to. There's no AHL to go to. They have to go back and start looking for jobs and start enrolling in their classes. Well, my brothers had done a boys' camp that I worked at every year. But we did a girls' camp right after the 1998 Olympics. We had 120 kids, the like girls, come into the rink, which I, never in my life have I seen that many girls gather in the rink, let alone have all their hockey bags, right? So right that moment, I realized there was growth and there was change. And they saw something, and then they wanted to play. A lot of those girls had already been playing, but there were a lot that just started because they saw it. It's definitely critical for that. Hockey in the United States has just exploded, partly because of the exposure, more visibility, um, consistent programming, but we're doing the right things because now more people are coming to games and more people are tuning in from afar. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's a good alignment of where women's sports are in the world and where hockey is in the whole ethos. Because of the growth, people are seeing that the game is really good. There's a fan base, there's growth in the youth. I hope one day we don't have to have to have the conversation about men versus women in sport because both sports can coexist. Yes, the man's game might look a little different than the female game, but they're both very good quality. Women's hockey, like any women's sport, is facing all the barriers that just women's athletics faces. You know, I think a lot of people are unfairly grade where we are in the whole ethos of pro sports in comparison to the men who have had centuries of opportunities and funding and many, many chances to fail. And we are just showing up fully on stage being like, this is us um, and expected to succeed right off the bat. Obviously, men's sports in general, they make a lot, a lot of money. I think striving for payment being equal at some point and paying women in general more because they work just as hard and they, they deserve that. The younger kids growing up, there's a lot more resources and you know, the older players really had to fight for that. The hardest thing to do is to get people to understand where we've come from because it's it started well before me. Um, but then to never ever make someone feel guilty for where we've come from and to where we are now. Obviously to, to understand it's, it's tremendous work, but be fearless with the way that they attack the future. And even today, like we just got pretty um, like we didn't get pretty um like that before. And it's something that we've earned and and, and deserve for for many years. And um, you know, generations before us didn't get it, but here we are today, being able to capitalize on all their hard work. We were able to go out to a nice center in LA before the rivalry series games. Our staff came up with some appetizers, they were calling it, and they happened to be our world championship rings from uh, this past Worlds in Brampton. I can't remember the last time we were physically all together and received world championship rings. And to do it over great food and great company was just mint. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Seeing some of the girls who it was their first world championship just uh, you know, how their face lit up seeing that ring, and you really start to see the importance of uh, what our team did and, and how we came together, and uh, sharing that with them was a really special moment. Thank you. Zanina, that's a great question. That is a great question. We're biased because we think we play the best position in the world. Yeah. We're forwards. So we get to score the goals and have the big moments, the bright lights and everything fun. Did you ever play defense? I did. I played defense until I was 13. Yeah, I always wanted to be a goalie and I'm really thankful that I'm not. Um, yeah, no, so it's a really tough position. Yeah. But Danae, we should ask you, what position do you want to play? Goalie? That's good. That's good stuff. Where are Janae's parents? We still need goalies, okay? We still need goalies. 
I think it's incredible. Like when you, when we were in LA and there were all these little girls waiting um, for all of our players after the game and they want autographs. Like we didn't have any of that. Like in my day, it was like, oh, you play hockey? Really? You know, I think times are changing. More money, more business plans are, are involved with propping up these different professional leagues and it's creating more more chances and more programming for women um, all across the globe, which is really exciting. I mean, personally, when I was growing up, uh, there wasn't a lot of girls teams in Texas. So even now when I go back, um, there's more girls teams, more coaches. Um, so a lot more resources for girls, which is awesome to see. Anytime I get to kind of help out, even if it's just a camp or, you know, coaching kids, um, you know, I love, to, I love to do it because I was in their shoes. It's awesome to see the game growing. The opportunity for women's hockey to go into the Olympics was everything. Winning a gold medal in 1998 was everything to growing the game. Um, more collegiate sports, more programs across the country. I mean, we have girls on this team from Texas. We have girls on this team from all over the United States. Um, and that was anomaly. Just the pure participation rate of girls playing changes the whole trajectory of the women's game and the growth of the game. You look at rivalry series in the USA where there's all these opportunities for girls to look up to you and, and to meet you. I feel like in the past when I was when I was young, there wasn't always the meet and greets and the, the things where you can legitimately see someone that you're like, holy cow, she's real and she's not just on TV and she's not just on, like on the rank. So I think that's the biggest is not only are you know girl participation numbers in hockey growing exponentially. I know in Minnesota our numbers have been going up a ton. Any opportunity for a little girl to get on the ice with someone that they look up to is huge, and that's definitely been something that USA Hockey does a great job of doing. To see the growth in the women's game, the skill sets, the skating, the hockey sense, and to see them all on one stage at the World Championships is incredible. It doesn't get better than that. Well, the expectation going to any Worlds is to win, so that's the expectation. You know, there definitely are more distractions and things that go into it when you're the hosting country. There's uh, more that's being asked of you, but I think we have a good group that can focus on what's important and control what we can control, and at the end of the day, execute what we need to do on the ice to be successful. I stay on the ice a lot because you can't be out there forever. You can't do this forever, and I understand like how fleeting those moments are. You have to have the right humility to understand that there's just so much to do and there's not enough time to do it. The rivalry series is extremely special. It sets the tone and puts us in a good competitive headspace with Canada. It increases the intensity between us. It's a good barometer for us in many ways to be able to play against our uh, sisters from the north. <laughs> if you want to call them that. <laughs>